the best trainer. Ooh. I'll have to, I'll have to give it to my deputy. It'll have to be Gary Bradshaw. Ooh. I suppose Michael Daly likes to talk big, so he does. He thinks he's it all planned out in his head before he goes out on the pitch, so he'll have to give it to him. Gary O'Donnell definitely. He's always whinging about training. He's always whinging about someone missing training too, so has to be God. Adrian Farley, not a doubt. You could wind him up with Anton. The player's player. I can't see myself really, so I'd have to go for somebody else. I, I'd have to go. You'd have to go with Barry McHugh, I think. Jeez, it's a hard one to pick, but I, I go with Killy McDade. Yeah, he's, after back from Australia, he, you know, he just lost a bit uh, when he was down under. The most intelligent player. So we'll go with Rory Lavelle. He's, he's studying the way for exams at the moment there, so we'll say he's the most intelligent. The worst banter. Oh, it'd have to be Tom Flynn. <laughs> you won't like that. Dressing room DJ, I, I'll have to, I'll have to give it to Adrian Verley. He likes to throw on a few tunes and mix it up, so give it to Adam. Oh, Can I say it myself? <laughs> I, I'm going to take another title, even though Podge will disagree with one GPS test. Slowest on the team. Oh, it has to be Damo, yeah. Damo, of course. He's, he's that big, so he can't run quick. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, Shane wasn't too hesitant in calling out his teammates there. You do need to go back to training afterwards, Shane. Kieran, I'm going to come to you now. Who was the slowest that you played with? Oh, the slowest that I played with? Um, uh, probably my basketball partner, Mike Quirk, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't there. Uh, he wouldn't light up the GPS stats now his feet over the first 30 metres, yeah. He won't mind me saying that. He knows, he knows it's the truth. And what about the... <laughs> oh, oh, fair enough. OK, well, we'll, 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 leave, we'll leave you off the hooks over there. <laughs> OK, time to recap on all the results in Division 1 of the Allianz Football League. Dublin got their first win of the campaign over Galway. Mayo secured a nine-point win over Tyrone in OMA. Kerry edged out Cavan in Breckney Park, while Ross Common got their campaign up and running, defeating Monaghan. All of that means Mayo sit atop of Division 1, with Tyrone rooted at the bottom. Kerry also have a 100% record and are currently second, with Dublin in third. And that sets up this weekend's action rather nicely. Kerry hosts Dublin in Austin Stack Park on Saturday night. Mayo entertain Cavan in McHale Park. And on Sunday, Tyrone will be hoping for their first win of the league away to Roscommon, while Monaghan hosts Galway at 2pm. And don't forget, you can watch Kerry against Dublin live on Air Sport 1 this Saturday. Damien and the guys will be building up to that huge game from 6pm. Also, we have live coverage of Mayo versus Cavan, which throws in at 7pm in McHale Park. That is live on Air Sport 2. And if you're on the Sky platform, it is available on either channel, 422 or 871, depending on your Skybox. Well, guys, you know, there's plenty of talking points now ahead of, of this weekend's action. It would be remiss of me not to start with the one that everybody's talking about. Sold out already in Austin Stark Park. The atmosphere is ready to go. This could be a classic, Kieran. Yeah, I think the game uh, down there two years ago was was a draw and it was an absolute belter of a game. And as you said, it's been booked out for weeks. There is no hotel room to be got in my hometown in Schlee. People are ringing me non-stop looking for tickets. It's like I feel like I'm getting ready for an all Ireland <laughs> final again. Um, but yeah, look, it's it's a moat watering clash. The Dubs bring great fanfare when they come down. They, they travel in big numbers. Mm -hmm. They're supporting a, a, an excellent team. Kerry are coming with this young side after winning their first two games. Um, There'll be a bit of, you know, there was nothing really expected of them the first day mm. in Tyrone. You know, it was kind of a question of we didn't really know where they were. Um, they got a great win. They went up and backed it up last week, having been down at half time and not playing overly mm. well. Uh, they pulled it out of the bag with some heroic performances, um, in particular Sean O'Shea. Um, and now they're coming down to this cl clash, which is, it's, it's perfectly set up for both teams. Um, uh, and I just hope that, you know, that the weather is that the weather holds up and it isn't a game that's dictated by a gale blown into the horn's yeah. end in the first half and it's 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 this real game of two halves. I'd love it just to be, you know, a, a, a good, a nice cold night with not too much wind and two teams going at each other and with a dry ball, that'd be, that'd be uh, a moat-watering. 
clash to look forward to without a doubt. Well, we've we've had plenty of clashes, brilliant clashes between Kerry and Dublin in Trilly down through the years. I suppose there are going to be battles all over the pitch, but there'll be ones on the sidelines as well, Eamon. There will be a psychological battle between Jim Garvin and Peter Keane. Obviously, it's their first encounter. Yeah, yeah. So there's kind of obviously you're, you're thinking, will uh, Peter Keane want to be showing his hand or will he be looking to land the fo first blow? Um, the two similar managers in, in as far as they both came through with underage teams. Um, yeah, so it'll just it'll just be very interesting in terms of Kerry. What Kerry are going to bring? Are they going to, you know, show? Are they going to show their hand essentially? Um, for me, I don't think I don't think they overly will um, play any different than they have in the last few in the last two games, um, you know, which will be essentially their defensive system. And I suppose it, it, there's so much talk. Um, if I should say you said it yourself, there. Do you think Dublin are going to be um, targeting him? Yes, there's no doubt about <laughs> it. He will be targeted, uh, and Sean is. Sean gave me an awful trimming in the club championship game two years ago and I saw this 18-year-old kid coming out to mark me. Uh, I soon found out what he was all about. So he, he'll, be, he'll be well able for it. But, you know, it, it's always hard to back up performance when you kick 12 points and you kind of haul your team over the line, in essence, is what he did. You know, he's coming up against, you know, they talk about Kerry being a defensive structure. Dublin have a very solid mm -hmm. defensive structure. They get plenty of bodies back behind the ball and will make it difficult. Mm -hmm. But what Sean showed last week and what he was brilliant at last year as well is... You know, he kept carrying the game in the first half last week. You know, we weren't overly playing well. We were getting these tough frees. Sean, he was putting it down, planting it over the black spot. And there's nothing better playing, and you know the same, when you're playing and it's hard to get scores and it's league football. And next thing you're out there and you get a tough free and you're in there and you're, you're saying, do I have to battle for this now? Is it going to drop short? Is it going to be one of those ones that goes a mile wide? And you're kind of like, oh, no, next one. But when they start sailing over the bar, you always feel like you have a chance. And, you know, Shawnee will have kicked in Tralee many, many a time uh, in, his, in his minor and under, 21 day, under 20 days for Kerry. And um, I'm sure he'll be, he'll be ready to go Saturday night. And, if, you know, if, if he's getting freeze and planking him over and keep Kerry in touch, um, they'll have a chance on Saturday night. Yeah, so certainly in front of the home crowd as well, the, the confidence well, will raise. Well, uh, like, you know, I was, I was actually in the crowd two years ago for the game and... Uh, the atmosphere was absolutely electric and, you know, something the GA have to look at even when it comes to the Super 8s that we get these neutral venues where it's actually going to be packed, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, like how many are we going to get 20,000, okay, we'll go play it here, you know, that has, that's very important and that's what Tralee gives maybe more so over Killarney in the league game, mm -hmm. you know, I think Killarney in the league game when you have 10 or 12,000, it looks kind of empty because it can hold 45, but when you bring it to Tralee, 12,000 inside there, it's absolutely packed to the rafters and you get that, players get that buzz, you know, players are going the extra mile, it's, it feels like a huge game all of a sudden, so it's, it's, it's a big one and the atmosphere will be a huge part of Saturday night. And Kerry will have to rise it and the young players too, that will help them if the crowd get behind them, which the Kerry crowd will on Saturday night. Absolutely, and I suppose staying with Kerry for a second, Damon, you know, you were looking at the fact that they're, I suppose what's deemed more defensive now they only conceded 20 points in their opening two games it's 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 a move away maybe from the more traditional carry that we've we've come to see yeah a lot of people say the carry have now sold out like <laughs> like everyone else um i think um what carry are doing is, is slightly different to shall we say what what a lot of the also teams um are doing they are getting 15 men back behind the play rather than back in their own 45 um so they're getting the numbers back but what they're actually doing is they're they're really then chasing the play out, which is, is, is what, what Dublin do. They get the numbers back and then they chase the play out. So they're not just standing there waiting, mm -hmm. marking space. They're getting set up and then they're chasing the ball out. Um, against Tyrone, they had eight swarm turnovers. So it's essentially where there's more than one person coming in on, on a tackle and they had seven against Cavan as well. So um, that seems to be something they're really working on. And that's a template that I would see that would be something that Dublin do, um, which is kind of an advancement on... Um, on a lot of what, what, what most teams are doing and they're just bringing people back and then when you're swarming it allows a counter-attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the, that swarm turnover, that now on Saturday night with, with the Kerry crowd, if they can get that, you know, that's, it's almost like a score, you know, that's mm -hmm. them turnovers, you, you know, we've all been out there, they're, they're inspirational mm -hmm. kind of plays and, you know, I'm sure like looking at the first two games last year, Kerry conceded 526 or something in the first two games and, you know, there was more goal chances than that. Um, and this year, there's no goal chance being conceded, you know, mm -hmm. um, t 20 points, 13 against Kevin, 7 against Tyrone. So, you know, it's, I suppose coming in as a new manager, you know, he's coming in kind of going, OK, what, what do we have to look at here? And, you know, looking at us uh, last year against Galway, against um, Monaghan and Clonus, and especially in the first half against Kildare, we were a bit open and teams were kind of kicking scores and, you know, uh, we've good backs in Kerry, but 
you know, a defensive system, no matter what sport, whether it's basketball, football, soccer, a system is good, but once it allows you to play ball as well, and I think, you know, as solid as Kerry have been, I think especially against Tyrone, it was all about getting that victory against Tyrone. I think Kevin, they were able to express themselves a small bit more in tough circumstances, but yeah, look, it's, I don't think we've gone to the dark side, but I think certainly <laughs> as, a, as a new manager has come in, you know, it, it, it has to be made solid, especially yeah. we're missing a few marquee forwards, so, you know, we have to work for our scores, but we've got excellent players, Breen Begley, Tom Sullivan coming out, Paul Murphy, great ball players that are coming out at pace and allowing us then to yeah. get up the field. And I suppose like that, you, you have to constantly evolve to stay on the top, so I'm going to ask you both now for your prediction, because there are arguments for both sides, but who do you think is going to take the points? I'll have to go with Kerry in, in Tralee. Um, they should have won there two years ago. Um, they conceded a, mm -hmm. a dubious late late free. Um, so I would, I, I'm predicting, predicting a, maybe a one point win. It'll be very tight. It'll, it's going to be tight. Um, and, you know, Kerry with the home crowd behind them and, and a team looking to really prove themselves and a team looking forward to, to a battle. And I'm sure Dublin will be too, but... Um, it has to mean more to carry on Saturday. Yeah. If, if, if you have four-time All-Ireland champions coming, don't you? You have to be out of your mind for the victory, and I'm sure they will be a Saturday night. It was never going to be anything else anyway from him, so I don't even know why yeah. I asked him. But Evan, I'm going to ask um, you a more neutral perspective. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the home crowd is going to have uh, is going to bring every carry, carry man on 10 percent there. But um, yeah, I think I think Dublin are going to be a bit too savvy, especially when Dub when Kerry are trying a new system. I can just I can see Dublin going back and forth and back and forth and finding those little holes. So yeah, I think Dublin by three or four. I love it when there's a split decision, <laughs> then the other one can say I told you so next week. Right, okay, well let's move on now to, to Mayo Cavan. Okay, and like every year, particularly in the league, you know, new squads, new faces, and, and Mayo certainly have new faces. Eamon, who's caught your eye? Yeah, well, I, I think it's kind of the, the lazy analysis and that everyone everyone talks about Mayo's need for a, a new forward. Uh, Mayo mm. found a new forward this year. Um, for me, Mayo's backs are actually more of a problem than their forward line on the big day. And what they've really struggled with in the last few years, especially against Galway, is a bit of a calm head in that middle third. Um, so while Fionn McDonough really stood out, um, against Tyrone. The player who really stood out for me um, was Michael Plunkett, mm -hmm. um, centre half back for Mayo. Um, you know, this player he's, it was his it was his first it was his first um, league start for Mayo, but um, instead of looking like a duck out of water, you can see him here. His head is up constantly. He's like a duck in water. Um, <laughs> the way he picks this pass out, he actually had 30 possessions in the game. Uh, he had a he had a point which is narrowly wide and in the other 29 he had accurate passes. 14 of them were kick passes. You can see this one with his left foot. Um, and this is something which, which Mayo have been desperately missing for the last couple of years. We've got a lot of players who are very high octane around that middle third. Um, you know, and they pick up a ball here and if there's space in front of them, and if there's a man in front of them, they're going to run through that man. If there's space in front of them and a kick on, they're going to kick it. But they're not going to stop and steady themselves exactly like he did there. Take the tackle, look left, look right, and, and give that little pass. And I think he is he's a potential. He's going to get a lot sterner test than in that game. Um, but he has a potential to bring May on another level because mm -hmm. he's something that they don't have. Yeah, exactly. And as you said, that's something that they possibly need. Let's talk a bit about Kavanaugh as well for a second, I suppose. I mean, Michael Graham's involvement with Mullen Yachta, do you think that's having an impact on, on, on Kavanaugh's preparation? I don't because um, I think it was actually 2013 Eamon Fitzmaurice was in with Fenui getting mm -hmm. ready for uh, an intermediate final around I think like next weekend uh, like six years ago So he and he was managing um, Pubble School of Cockery, uh, back west so mm -hmm. there was there was all that going on and yeah. he was managing Kerry in his first year so there was there was a pile of, of, of pressure on him that way but I would never put the results down to yeah. the manager. He was there at every session, you know, he had us well prepared. We didn't go out and play and that was and that's probably where Kevin at at the moment. They were in a good position last week. They look really good at half time. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the fact that he's, you know, I'm I'm, I'm sure he's every second night. He's probably very busy <laughs> at home. Yeah. Um but I, I don't think it's having any effect on, on, on Kevin to be to be honest with you. Yeah, well that's that's always, it's always good to have these talking fights. And we're moving on now, Tyrone West Common. I so, suppose, Eamon, let's talk about, you know, Tyrone keeper, John Morgan, I mean, one of the scorers of the game at the weekend. You know, he's, he's an interesting role, you feel, to play. Yeah, yeah. So, um, for me, Tyrone are really trying to maximise um, 15 versus 14 situations. And possession game is so important now. Um, before we look at this possession pack, we have to, again, clarify, this is a goalkeeper. It's not a centre-half back <laughs> or a full pack even coming out. He had 30 possessions in play, Niall Morgan, between the Kerry game and the Mayo game. Um, so he actually only lost the ball twice 
and he went for it and he had two shots as you can see here and one of them he missed and the other one he got that fantastic score mm -hmm. so um, he, he also had two interceptions in the game as well but um, for me that's obviously it's, it's an evolution in the game in terms of you have a goalkeeper who can support the play who is an emergency exit um, but then you're looking at Tyrone who are scored five points from play last week and only two the week before. Mm. So you're looking at a team who are kind of constantly having to go backwards to go forward. This is all good and well, but um, if you're over-relying on it, um, I can imagine, Kieran, if you're in full forward beside Gooch and your goalkeeper's dictating matters out the field, you kind of be getting a bit of itchy feet, would you? You kind of would, but uh, I do like... I do like what they're doing tactically. I do think it's, it's the way it's going to go. I think, you know... They're too valuable just to have sitting there in between the posts. You know, they do all the same training as us. They're doing all the fitness tests. You know, they're fit. A lot of them are very good footballers. A lot of them can kick. We saw Rory Began, you know, with his club as well last year, come up and kick a big score and he's slotting. But all, all of them can slot over the freeze. Mm -hmm. But I think being that being that outlet, as you say, and <clears throat> if they're good in the ball, I, I certainly have no problem in using them. You know, if they go to the right-hand side of the field, left corner back slats into goals just in case they turn it over and they kick it into an empty net, that's the one thing you don't want. But I don't think there's any great, you know, um, risk with it. You know, I think if, if they're good on the ball and they're making good decisions and good runs and, and are able to kick passes and, you know, bonus cherry on top stuff is, is that score that we saw from Niall at the weekend. But I think they'll definitely, you'll definitely start to see more footballing goalies, I think, come to the fore. You know, I think the, the days of just the guy standing in between the posts, um, you know, they have to be really accurate kickers now and I think if they can come out and affect the play, it's, it's definitely a huge plus for a team. Yeah. I, I can just imagine my dad watching that game and he'd be like, it says a lot about the forwards <laughs> if the goalkeeper has to come up and put the ball over the bar. Well, it, it, certainly in the last two games people might say that about <laughs> Tyrone, but I think long term for Tyrone, I think, you know, I, I said it during the week, I think they're a, they're a summertime mm -hmm. team, you know, they're different mm -hmm. to the team that I played against early on in my career. There were a lot of big guys in that team, whereas I think this team is really they're top of the ground, they're a championship team and you know, I think they're very powerful running from running from the back and if they're all of a sudden running with an extra player who can mm -hmm. deliver passes, like he's a very good kick passer off his hands. So I think it'll be something that, that they could use to, to good effect come the summertime, the dry ball and, and you know, having a good ball player there. Absolutely. Well, I suppose let's finish now with, with Mana and Galway. I mean, both coming off defeats, Mana now at home. I mean, how do you see this game going? Yeah, well, for me... Uh you can't talk about Kamanan without talking about Conor McManus. Um, but the first day, the way they used Conor McManus against Dublin, mm -hmm. um, the Simmons, I suppose, helped him to stay in the game. And he came on and he was the impact sub that, that won them the game. Where normally it's the other mm -hmm. way around, Dublin subs are winning them the game. Um, against West Common, he came on, it seemed a bit too late. So um, can they afford to put him as an impact sub again? Um, I don't think so. Uh, but this, in this game, like all of the Division One games, um, it could go either way. Um, but I, I think Monaghan... You know they're gonna. That last weekend would have been a kick up the ass for them, and, and uh, I can see them pushing on and winning that game by again three or four points. Okay, well, <laughs> plenty of suspense in store for us. Time now for another break. We will welcome back Seamus when we return and talk to the two lads about their combined five All Ireland titles. And we'll also get to your questions. So stay with us. <laughs> 